I consider Mr. Xia Baolong's speech very enlightening in the sense that he reasserted the importance of how national security law has brought Hong Kong from chaos to order. In rebuffing doomsayer's doubt of national security law, Mr. Xia has also provided solid evidence that the profits raised from the IPO in Hong Kong came at a total of 500 billion. That is 50% more than the previous 12 months period before the implementation of the national security law. In addition, Mr. Xia also cited a survey which stated that nearly 72% of the public interviewee have expressed a greater confidence in one country, two systems following the enactment of the national security law in Hong Kong. This is very crucial to fend off the unfounded critics who rally the public unwarranted fear and doubt against the national security law. Mr. Xia's five point patriot requirement lays out specifically the basic requirements of what prerequisites any prospective patriot administrators should be equipped with. This can be very important indicators the election committee members should consider in reviewing and nominating our future logical and chief executive candidates as well. It can ensure that only patriots with high caliber of administrative capabilities can only make their way to the administrative structure of the Hong Kong SAR. In this way, the quality of the governance in Hong Kong can be assured. As a young lawyer with an aspiration to serve Hong Kong, the five-point patriot ability requirements also enlightens me in the way that it serves as a target for me and other political aspirants to work hard on for becoming a patriot administrator in Hong Kong in the future. Firstly, the national security law in Hong Kong has an immediate deterrent effect to restore Hong Kong from endless chaos, street violence, to now a safe and orderly society. Secondly, the national security law is a genius institutional measure to plug the loophole in safeguarding the national security in Hong Kong. Considering the failure of the HKSAR to enact the national security legislation, even though we would use constitutionally required under Article 23 of the Basic Law. Thirdly, the national security law also sends a clear warning to all external forces and the local muppets that their intentions to involve in any acts endangering national security in Hong Kong in whatever forms. Fourthly, the national security law offers a lesson on law and order and how the rule of law in Hong Kong is demonstrated from the implementation to the effective enforcement of the, of the national security law in Hong Kong. The requirement for patriot ruling Hong Kong is very pivotal in ensuring the vessel of one country, two systems to sail further in Hong Kong despite rains and storms. Against the political backdrop of tension and rivalry in the US-China relationship, with Hong Kong as a piece in the geopolitical chess game and the political tussles occurred and aggravated in our legislature with the opposition wrecking havoc on the normal operations of the Hong Kong legislative process, for example with the filibustering until the national security law is in place, the requirement of the Patriot ruling Hong Kong is very vital and indeed long overdue as the national security law at least could resolutely exclude all anti-China disruptors, especially some of whom were indeed reported to have close affiliation with external forces against China from the administrative structure. This sends a very loud and clear signal to the opposition that any acts endangering national security in Hong Kong in any context, even like the freedom of expression as they always claim, will not be legally and politically condoned as the laws are no longer the toothless tiger. Coupling with the adherence to the five-point ability requirement for patriot administrators, as proposed by Mr. Xia Baolong, in the selection and election for prospective political talents for Hong Kong, 
I'm of the view that it can possibly positively contribute and enhance the quality of policy discussion, and consequently facilitate effective and quality governance for the Hong Kong SAR. Echoing President Xi's words, I implore our government to spend no time and proactively enact the laws to further safeguard the national security in Hong Kong, as the constitutional ab- obligation under Article Twenty Three of the Basic Law. In addition, our government should also strengthen national security education for younger generation in our city. It's something that the Hong Kong SAR government is obligatory to do so. Indeed, under Article Ten of our national security law, and such efforts are indeed overdue. This may may well explain why some of our youngsters have no sense of attachment to our motherland, and why they were easily swayed by the external forces and the opposition to get radicalized to oppose our government. And even the Chinese sovereignty over Hong Kong as they are.